You know, in 1946, people didn't walk around with cassette recorders and mini-discs the way we do today. And so while our moment in history is very thoroughly documented, we record everything, from the modern-day equivalent of Admiral Blandy to baby's first words, we don't have very many of those audio artifacts from 50 years ago. Actually, we do have some. We just can't listen to them because many of them were recorded on this now extinct medium. Wire. I'm not kidding. Wire. Roughly the size of a strand of hair. And I'm not saying that the sound went through wires. I mean the sound was recorded on the wire the way we now record the sound on tape. And the funny thing is, tape as we know it had been invented. It just hadn't caught on in America yet. And so for the first half of the 20th century, people oftentimes recorded on wire, a medium as improbable as it sounds. It's a tensile, persnickety, difficult material. And if it breaks, it just boing, it just snaps. And, says Art Schifrin, who spends a lot of time working with wire recordings, when it does snap, you end up with this messed up nest of wire that you have to untangle and then tie back together and hope it doesn't snap again. Art Schifrin is an audio restorer. He's a guy who spends his time coaxing sounds out of media that have gone extinct. And wire definitely had a lot going against it. Somehow, though, thanks to accidents of history, wire defied the laws of evolution. The part about survival of the fittest, anyway and for a time even enjoyed what Schifrin calls its golden age, from 1946 to 1950, much longer than it had any right to. And here's the thing. You wouldn't go out and buy commercial recordings on wire, but you would use wire for dictation and to record weddings and family reunions and school assemblies to document everyday life. Hear ye, hear ye, the senior class policy of 1951. 